Hello and welcome to XI Tech Software Update video. My name is Terry Dean, I'm one of the application specialists here and I'd like to run you through just some of the new features that you'll come across within Revit Architecture 2016. And the first of those is now the ability to change the colour of the background to anything other than black and white. Um, Revit, as we know, is slightly biased towards using a white background and um, and as such can prove a bit of a glare for continuous working but now as you can see coming down to this section within this dialog box you can change it to any colour of your choice so I'm going to choose grey which is slightly less of a glare pick OK and OK there and you can see we've now achieved that now another feature of Revit was the ability for us to either see or not see the line weights and um, so as we zoom in we can see the line weights are currently visible and there's always been this feature here called thin lines which you can also find within the view tab uh, along the ribbon within Revit which you can tell it set it to thin lines which means we, we no longer see the the line weights and, and that was fine we, we could stay like that all day but if we close the project down and reopened it it would re-enable that feature so we'd actually be looking at thick lines again um, now it's a setting as soon as you save this project it will actually save it within an any file uh, which means it will be preserved so you won't have to keep on uh, turning that to on that feature um, also um, some people found the fact that when you zoomed into an area uh, within a view within within Revit um, and you saved it like that it was quite annoying that the next time you open that project up it would actually do a zoom to fit and you weren't actually back in the in the area you were looking at so you'll now see if I save this project and close this project down and then reopen it it will prove to us two things uh, the first thing that the you see that the, the the thick lines the line weights are no longer visible so we it's remembered what we did in the last session and we actually opened up in that uh, zoomed in uh, view so that, that's one good feature uh, that, that, that's been added um, we know also that the Revit models uh, become very very populated with data meaning that our type selector uh, list of items be it windows floors stairs wall types um, gets very very long on, on occasions and together with other lists as well they can get very very long whether it's a, a drop down list within the ribbon or in another dialog box or in the palette and uh, so they've given us a, a way of quickly um, sort of searching through those lists so if I start with a simple one here like model line um, this list here that shows us the various line styles can become very lengthy especially if we create our own customized ones but you'll now see if I start to type in the first few characters and it return there that it automatically selects that item so that's a a ribbon drop down list um, if I now bring up uh, a dialog box so I'll bring up the text uh, dialog box here the type properties text dialog box and um, if I want to change this arrowhead let's say to one that was a 20 degree so if I type in 20 you can see it's highlighted that return it's it's enabled that and then likewise if I choose the wall tool and come over to the type selector again we're going to see a, a very long list of of types available to us now if I start typing in the letters INT at the top here within this new search field we see here it now uh, finds everything that incorporates that string so if I click on there I'm now ready to go within internal walls so that can dramatically speed up your um, your searching uh, mechanism rather than having to scroll down reams and reams of, of alternatives okay now there is also an annoying feature of the properties palette that's been resolved um, if the properties palette was uh, docked let's say over the project browser in this way um, or if the scroll bar here was on the drawing side or the view side of the screen it did this annoying thing where as you scrolled it down if you slightly moved your cursor into the view here this would quickly zip up to the top again and it might take you two three possibly in four tight uh, goes at getting your cursor uh, down here or your scroll bar down here 
before you, you resolved it, which is very frustrating. But as you can see, it doesn't do anything now. It just remains where you scrolled down, which is much, much better. And it's about time that got to, got resolved, which it now has. OK. Now, another thing within within Revit, which which I'm sure a lot of people use, is, is constraints. And um, there's nothing in this model at the moment to indicate that any constraints are being used. And that's always been... The, the questions have been asked, you know, yes, we can apply these constraints. We don't know where they are. We can't see them. They're invisible. How can I know that constraints have been applied? Well, that's been made a lot simpler for us by going down to the view control bar here. You can see there's a button there that says reveal constraints. And straight away, I can see in the center of this view that um, we have some, maybe some locked dimension constraints here. We have possibly an EQ constraint going on here. And there's also a, a red line uh, going up here, uh, which probably imp implies that we have an alignment constraint, lock constraint going on here. So quick, very quickly, we can establish and familiarize ourselves where the, where the constraints have been applied. So that's a, that's a really useful function now. OK, moving on. Um, we have the ability now to see a hosted element, um, like a tag, let's say, um, and see where its host is. Um, it will highlight it for us. So if I choose this one tag here, up on my contextual ribbon, I can choose Select Host, and it then shows me, highlights it quite clearly, that, that is indeed the host. So we could use that in lots of different scenarios within Revit. Now, so even if I chose all, all three tags at the same time as well, Make sure I've got them. Yeah, I've got them this time. Um, and choose select host. You'll see we can do that. Now, what I'm going to do is create a scenario where um, I want to transfer these families to another host, but I want to maintain the numbering. So it could be doors, could be windows in this case. So once again, I'm going to choose those three um, tags, find their host using exactly the same technique I did before, which is up here. And it finds that. And then I pick new host. And if I just bring my cursor down so it just selects the top of that wall there and left click there, you'll see that it's now rehosted those windows and it's kept the same numbering, which is which might prove to be very, very useful. Let me just undo that and delete that wall and zoom to fit. Okay, so that's a very simple one. Right, what I'm now going to do is uh, duplicate my uh, existing default floor plan. So I'm going to duplicate that uh, with detailing. And I'm going to rename that to, in readiness for something I'm going to show you. So we're going to rename that uh, Rooms. So you can probably guess what's coming up. Um, We've always been able to place the room element, um, but it's always been a very manual, pro manual, manual process um, where we just have to click in each one individually or we can click in one and then copy it. But now it's been made incredibly quick. So if I click on there, we now have this new room panel here and it says place rooms automatically. Um, and when I click on there, it tells me that it's added 10 rooms. And sure enough, there they are, as quick as that. So you can see that's quite a an efficient tool there and uh, a little bit later we'll add that to a to a view in in just a second so so yeah so that was up here within the architecture tab you choose the room tool and that will automatically present you with the the automatic room placement feature so it's a really really efficient tool that uh, right I'm now going to place this view onto a, a sheet so down here there is a sheet waiting for there you can see it's blank I'll come up the browser, drag that view in onto that sheet, like so, and there we are. So uh, and uh, so at this point, as far as placing views on sheets is concerned, there is no difference. But what I'm about to show you next is different. So I'm intentionally going to navigate away from uh, the sheet view. What in the past, it's been sort of, it's not, not hard, but sort of a tedious process to find out which one of these views is actually on a sheet. So if I right click on this one, you can see we've got this thing that says open sheet. Well, it's grayed out. So it's obviously not on a sheet. So if I go to that one that we just applied, which we guarantee we know it's on a sheet. If I right click on there, you see you've got to choose open sheet and it goes directly to that sheet. So that's a brand new feature with Revit 
within Revit 2016. Um, so likewise, is this on a sheet? No, but is this one? Yes. So if I open that sheet, we can see that's the case. Come down to these elevations down here, right click, uh, open sheet. So it's a very quick way of finding which sheet that actual view exists on. So that's kind of speed up efficiency in, in navigating for those types of things. Okay, let me just go back to floor plan there, close hidden windows, and we'll proceed. A brand new um, set of parameters have been added for scheduling. Um, something that's always been asked of me is can we see the, as well as the finished floor level, can we see the structural level as well, the top of that, uh, of the structural slab? And um, well, now we can, don't we? Now have parameters that we can either use for tagging pro, uh, purposes or we can actually schedule. Now, there's something you have to look out for here. So, we'll, um, we'll go into view, we'll choose schedules. Um, I'm not going to overcook this, I'm just going to put a few in. So, I choose floors. Okay, I'll bring in the area, and it's these parameters that are new. So, I'm going to choose elevation at top, so that'll be the finished floor level. And then the elevation at the top of the core, which will be at the top of the slab. So we should be able to see all that data when I pick OK. However, there seems to be something missing. We cannot see the uh, elevation at the top of the core. And there's a very simple reason for that. So I'll show you that, show you how you get around that. So if we go to, um, I'll go to my 3D view. Close in Windows. And I need to be able to get to the floors themselves. Well, it's easy to get to the ground floor, of course, but I can't get to the ones within the building. So I'm just going to perform a simple um, uh, temporary hide isolate. I'm going to select one of these floors, right click, select all instances. So that's got all those. And then hold the control key down and select the, the bottom floor here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this checkbox in the properties palette here. And then the next time I look at my uh, floor schedule, you'll see that that column that wasn't populated is now populated. And uh, I'll just uh, tile the views here so we can see that. So if in here, if I select my previous selection there and then choose um, turn off structural, you'll see that those values have now disappeared over here. And if I turn that back on again, we get those values back. So don't let that catch you out. It's just a simple case of selecting the floors and turning that tick box on. And now you can incorporate that parameter within your schedules. Okay. So just reset my temporary height isolate. That's good. All right. I'm then going to open up a perspective view. Um, so I'm going to go to my um, external perspective view here. Now in the past, <clears throat> up until this release, we've always been limited by what we can and can't do within a perspective view. Uh, very few tools we can use. We've now some of that's been relaxed. Uh, so for example, if I now go to the modify tab, you can see we have access to align, move, uh, delete, of course, and we also have um, pin and unpin. So if I were to select this item here and choose move. I'm now positioned to, to be able to move that in a straight line, as you can see. Um, if I want to pin these items, if I were to pin all those, I can now pin them, and likewise, I could unpin them when necessary. And then finally, as I've already said, we can now use the Align tool. So if I choose a line, pick the front face of that uh, bench, zoom in a bit closer. Oh, and then look, there you got it. There I have, got it there. And pick the front face of that. And then we could lock that if necessary. So, so you can see that some of the restrictions that we had within perspective have now been relaxed. Like so, that's useful to be able to use those even in perspective. Right on the subject of 3D views and um, with non-perspective in this case, uh, I'm just going to go back to my floor zero. Now, something that's um, always been useful to see and that is a, a cropped say 3D view of an area and um, it's, it's been achievable for a while but unfortunately it takes a few steps to achieve it not too many but it takes a few steps well now it takes hardly any steps this is this is really quick 
So if I put a, a window around that area there, and now up on my um, contextual ribbon, you can see we have this view panel, and inside here we have this new tool that says selection box. Um, and if I click on there, that's exactly what it does. It creates a very quick cropped view of that area that you just encircled. How quick was that? So that's a really useful function. Um, so if I right click on my view cube and save that uh, to, a, to a name. And this, just to show that process once again. So this time if I encircle this, these two rooms um, and then choose that same tool look, we get the same result. Let's turn on my visual style there. There we go. So you can see how quick and efficient that is. Okay, I'll leave it there on that uh, on that note, and uh, hope you found those useful. Thank you very much, and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, on other occasions at training, maybe. Thank you.